Hi, today we're going to talk a little bit about the DCC Studio. The DCC Studio was a software package developed, uh, developed by Philips for Windows 98, unfortunately only. That's why we're producing it on a Windows 98 uh, computer. Uh, we have tried to emulate uh, Windows 8, Windows 10 uh, and using uh, Windows 98, but that doesn't work since the parallel port is connecting a special cable to the DCC-175 portable. The DCC-175 portable was the last portable player Philips has ever made and it, will, uh, it would allow you to import your uh, audio materials either from a pre-recorded tape or an original artist tape, which is interesting because uh, so far Philips was very eminent about um, not being able to copy and distribute existing DCC tapes. With this studio package you could do that. Um, what we're going to show you here is how you are uh, able to import audio files, edit them and then send them back with um, the DCC cable. The DCC cable, only 1400 uh, of these cables were ever made connecting that portable player to this DCC studio. And um, the nice thing about this software package is that you, not only can you create your own compilation tapes, but you are also able to edit the text uh, info from the artist. And that is something that was only available via remote, which is uh, time consuming. We're going to talk about three different options, um, sending and receiving the file through this uh, icon. Then the next icon is where, sort of like Audacity, you can edit files and here you can create your compilation files. By clicking on the first icon, you can um, connect the player. You see the player connected on the left side saying DCC and on the right hand side it would say Studio, DCC Studio. Uh, we're clicking on rewinding the, uh, the tape and we're going to transfer one of the uh, pre-recorded tapes that um, I've previously made. You can also select digital mic and line input allowing you actually to connect uh, a computer or any other source to the portable DCC player and send media that way to your computer. Um, so not only are you able to do DCC tapes but you can also um, digitize uh, sources externally connected to the DCC player. To transfer you have to click recording on the DCC studio side and play on the portable side. You can click the optional view meter. Uh, it will take a little bit more of processing capacity but it will give you a great visual. So now by clicking recording and play um, the information from the tape is now being transferred. Hooking up external speakers will allow you to hear this. I just made a short uh, track. Once I press stop, the tape stops, the recording is finished. You can name this file. We're going to name this uh, test and you could uh, type in the artist and the title information. Um, most likely you would want to transfer an entire tape and then copy and paste it into pieces as we're going to show you uh, in the uh, video shortly. Um, you could do it song by song, that is a little bit more time consuming. The ideal way is to uh, put in a tape and transfer the entire tape as a file and then use the editing software from DCC Studio to copy and paste because you would see the wave um, information and uh, you are able to copy and paste each file individually and then renaming it. That's what we're going to show you. I've already done um, an entire tape, uh, side A and side B, that's uh, unfortunately it won't do that automatically. You would have to do an entire side A and B and then uh, you are able to copy and paste each of these songs individually. So what we're going to show you here now is how to do that. Um, so I'm going to browse to something I've pre-recorded, uh, the weekend side A, and by opening that you would see that it is about uh, 30 minutes. Let's see what um, the information is here. Yes, it's uh, 28 minutes. And this is the entire waveform that uh, this produces. By zooming in, you can clearly see 
where the first uh, tracks um, are and we're going to copy and paste this first track into a new file you have to click the editor again so now you have two files open you paste it in here one is the original file and this is just this one song and you can save that individually by clicking save now it is important to type in the artist and title information because that's once you making your compilation tape is the information that will show um, when you're playing it the title will appear uh, if you go to track one it would say star boy like we're typing in here we're now going to save this file there's already a test file in there so I'm going to override this just for um, the sake of this demonstration um, you get the idea that although it's a time-consuming process it is faster and better because you can create your own compilation tapes and it's easier than using the remote uh, typing all that information in the next step is to create the compilation tape the order uh, how you want the tapes uh, to look and the title name there is a new uh, compilation tape in there we click new so then you can name the um, the title of the tape and the author uh, under pause you can uh, decide how many seconds uh, there's going to be a gap uh, between songs on the tape and then you see side A and side B where you can um, select under here what side A should look like, the order and what songs there should be. You see I've already done uh, this entire tape renaming all these songs and I can now uh, by holding the um, control button select what kind of songs I would like on side A and then press OK. And then I'm going to do the same thing for uh, side B. Now the next thing that you're going to see is something that you want to avoid. Side B is longer than side A, 43 minutes over 33 minutes. Side A always has to be slightly longer. Another weird thing um, but it is understandable um, since Philips tried to do a gapless information it means that it will automatically at the end of type A go to site B so you want site A to be longer than site B that way at the end of the last song on your compilation track on site A it will immediately reverse to site B rather than the uh, original analog cassette that would have to be rewinded all the way to the end and then uh, start from B. But that um, leaves you with uh, the desirability to make sure that side A is always slightly longer. So I'm just going to shift things up, add some songs to side A and now you see that side A is 40 minutes and side B is 35. That is uh, perfect for uh, this. Now, So now we can save that. We um, already named it and now we are uh, ready to send this compilation that we just made send it back to a tape I'm going to insert uh, an empty tape that's why you see this message as soon as you open up the door um, the DCC will uh, come up with an, an error message so we're going to put in a new fresh one and then we're going to click on send and receive is now we're going to send we're going to select the compilation tape, click off the view meter so we have no buffer on the runs. That happened to me quite a few times. And then um, we are going to click just recording on the DCC side. You will see so some options that you can leave as marked and press OK. And the tape will rewind itself uh, to the beginning before uh, you will see the next menu where it will state that you are now a super user meaning that you are allowed to write this information there there is that information you can press ok and then for the next 20 seconds nothing seems to be happening because it's writing a lead in and then as soon as uh, at the bottom of your screen uh, track one will appear and the counter starts running 
the um, first track is being written, the entire side A will be written uh, on side A, of course, and then the tape will automatically flip writing side B. So it's a fully automated process that you do not have to watch. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.